I'm going to show you the basically the last decision that a business has to make. The first decision that they're going to want to make is what, how much should we produce, what quantity. The second decision that they need to make is what price are they going to charge. And then the third decision that they need to make is uh, should we continue operating is one way of thinking it. Okay. Uh, so, and the way that I'm going to explain this to you is I'm going to show you that there are three different situations that a company can be in. They could be in a, in a situation where they are profiting. The second situation is they could be in a situation where they are operating at a loss. And the third situation is a situation where they should just shut down their operations and stop operating. And shutting down basically means producing a quantity of zero. So even though you think that the profit maximizing quantity should be 15,000 units, if the analysis of your company comes out that you should shut down, then you're going to scrap the profit maximizing quantity because you're not making any profit. You're not going to produce 15,000 units. Instead, you're actually going to produce zero units. You're going to send all your employees home and you're going to lock the doors of your business. Okay? Um, and so that's called the shut down decision. So a company, any company is typically in one of three situations. They're either operating at a profit, they're operating at a loss, or they are shutting down. Now I do want to give you a heads up that I'm kind of lying to you just a little bit. Um, in the next lesson, I'm going to explain to you, I'm sort of going to, going to change this a little bit and I'm going to undo it a little bit, but I don't want to explain uh, why I'm going to do that in the next lesson. Let's wait until the next lesson and I'll clarify all of this for you. But for now, I just want you to have a basic beginning understanding of the idea of profit, loss, or shutdown for a business. Okay? All right, so we know that uh, if we look at this particular market graph, I'm going to move that out of the way just for a minute. Uh, at this particular market graph, we can see the profit maximizing quantity. We know that the price is $90. We know that the average total cost is 70 We said that this rectangle right here represents the profit of the business, right? Um, and so uh, here's, uh, what, here's what you need to be looking at to understand this. Over on the left side here, you can see that we have identified the price and the average total cost and the average variable cost of the business. Now, the first thing that I need you to understand, and this is logically obvious, but I'm going to say it anyway just to make sure that you understand that it is true, that average variable cost is pretty much always smaller than average total cost. Because average total cost is equal to uh, average fixed cost plus average variable cost. Whoops, that's not a C, that's an O. Plus average variable cost. And therefore, the smallest that average fixed cost can be is basically zero or just slightly above zero. It could be 0 0.00000001 dollars, okay? And therefore, since we're adding to that number, and it's not going to be a negative number, since we're adding to that number average variable cost to get average total cost, then average total cost must always be the larger of the three numbers. And that means that average variable cost will always be smaller, see, or let's say it this way, average total cost will always be larger than average variable cost, okay? Always larger than average variable cost. But now I want you to look at price, and here's what I need to tell you, is that price, because price is not directly related or directly caused by costs, you know, costs are over there, revenues are over there. Costs can be their own thing, but revenues are in a completely different department. And therefore, revenues don't have to be, or excuse me, well, revenues and, and costs, uh, the price, the price per, or revenue per unit, the price, it doesn't have to be higher than or lower than or whatever average total cost. 
And therefore, here there are three possibilities. I'm going to show you something here graphically. Price can be in one of three places. Price can either be above average total cost or price can be between average total cost and average variable cost in here. You've already seen that in at least one of the examples. And then lastly, price could actually be down here below average variable cost. And you have seen that in one of, at least one of the examples. And so these three situations where price is greater than average total cost or where price is between average total cost and average variable cost or where price is smaller than average variable cost, those three situations are directly predictive of our three situations here. Our situation of profit, our situation of loss, or our situation of shutdown. And so here's how I'm going to represent it mathematically. The first situation is where price is greater than average, whoops, Average, that's, not, that's ugly. Let's do better than that. Average total cost. And of course, average total cost is always greater than average variable cost. The second situation is where average total cost is greater than price, or we can also say that price is less than average total cost, but price is still greater than average variable cost. And then the third situation is where average total cost, which is obviously greater than average variable cost, but average variable cost is now larger than the price that is being charged for the product. Or we can say that the price is less than average variable cost. And here's what we basically have is this situation where price is larger than average total cost this is a situation of profit. In this situation, the company is profiting. But when price is less than average total cost, here's what's basically happening in that situation. Well, let's just write it right here. We know that profit is equal to, I, showed, I did this before, is equal to price minus average total cost times quantity, right? But if this number is smaller than this number, then this is going to be a negative number. And if we have a negative times quantity, our profit is going to be a negative number. And when profit is a negative number in business, we don't call it profit anymore. We call it a loss. That means that the business is actually experiencing a loss. As it keeps producing and keeps producing, at the end of the month or whatever, uh, they have less money in their bank account. Uh, they have caused negative money, not positive money. And then this is a very si similar situation down here where price is really low, so low that it's even below average variable cost. This creates a very unique, and I'll explain it in just a few minutes with an example. This is a situation where the business must decide to shut down. They are bleeding. They are losing lots and lots of money. And so this situation is called the shutdown situation. The business needs to make a decision to shut down operations and not make, not produce anything at all. And so it's important for you to understand mathematically this situation, that when price is larger than average total cost, the company is profiting. When the company uh, when the price is smaller than average total cost, but it's actually larger than average variable cost, this company is going to continue operating. They're going to keep doing business, but they're going to do business at a loss. And you may be thinking, why in the world would they want to do that? I'm going to show you graphically in, an, in a, a graphical example why they're going to want to continue doing that. And then the third situation, if the price is actually less than average variable cost, this, they need to make the decision to shut down. Okay? And so, hopefully you've written that down. I'm going to go ahead and push this out of the way. When we look at this graph, it's very easy to you know, go through our procedure where the first thing we do is we look where marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. Then we identify the profit maximizing quantity. Then we go back up and identify 
the price, which is $90. Then we go and we identify the average variable cost, which is $40. Then we go and identify the average variable cost, or average, average total cost, which is $70. And so now all we really have to do is look over here on the side and see that price is higher than average total cost. So we know that this business is operating at a profit. And again, as we did in the previous segment, this rectangle here represents the profit rectangle, okay? And so now let's look at a few other situations in examples that you have already seen, that you've already gone through, uh, where we're gonna understand loss and also the shutdown decision. All right, so now here's another example. We, we've done, we did this previously where we identified the rectangle that had the variable cost and the fixed cost and it was sort of weird because now we have this little rectangle of loss, okay? Now, why does that loss exist? Well, we just said, right? A loss is going to exist when average total cost is larger than price, but when price is larger than average variable cost. So what we're looking at here is a situation where average total cost is greater than price which is greater than average variable cost. And this is a situation, in this particular situation, this company should continue operations at a loss. Okay? Meaning they're, it's okay. They're going to be, they're going to continue losing money, losing money, losing money. Okay? And you're going to say, I know what you're thinking. What you're going to say is why in the world would they continue doing business if they are operating at a loss? And here's my answer. My answer is because they are, they have fixed costs. And they are, by operating, recovering some of those fixed costs. Here's what I mean by that. We know that if we calculate here the average fixed cost, we got 21 times 300. And I think, what did we do last time when we calculated that? We said that their fixed costs were $6,300. Okay, $6,300. If this business stops operations entirely, if they shut down, they still have to pay out their fixed costs. I want you to go back a long time, several lessons, and I want you to think about, remember when we started talking about fixed costs? We said that fixed costs have to be paid by the business even if they produce zero units. So this company, if they produce zero units, they will have to pay out $6,300 in fixed costs. So. There is, let's say that this is every week. So every week, they're going to have to pay out checks for $6,300, and their bank account is going to get smaller and smaller and smaller and smaller by $6,300 at a time. That's a big chunk, right? If they continue operating, if they go ahead and produce the 300 units, they're going to operate at a loss. But look, what did we calculate here last time? To, uh, to calculate this, this rectangle, this loss, we're going to do 63 minus 56. That's $7. $7 times 300, that's $2,100. So here are their choices. Operate at negative $6,300 or operate at negative $2,100. Those are their choices. They have a decision to make. Okay, everybody, let's get together. So you get like seven or eight important people, big wigs in the company, all sitting in a room together, and they say, okay, we got an important decision to make here. We either have to make a decision to lose $6,300 per week or lose $2,100 per, per week. Somebody raised their hand and says, well, do we have an option to profit? And the person says, no, we do not have the option to profit. Given our circumstance, we are not capable of profiting right now, but we might be able to profit sometime in the future. For right now, the only decision that we have to make is, do we want to lose $2,100 a week or do we want to lose $6,300 a week? Well, the obvious answer to that, any rational person would say, I want to lose $2,100 a week. So, by, so, and that decision is to continue operating. And here's why. By operating, you are recovering 
what is it, $4,200. This region right here, 56 minus 42, that's 14. 14 times 300, that's $4,200. This is $4,200 in, you're going to write this down, recovered recovered fixed costs. By operating, because we're, we're selling at a price that is larger than our variable cost, we're covering our, our variable costs, so we're good, and we're charging a price that gives us a little more money to pay down some of our fixed costs, and now we're only losing $2,100 per week or per month or per day or whatever it is, okay? And so this is a situation, a situation where the price is between the average total cost and the average variable cost. This business should make the decision to continue operating even though they're operating at a loss. And now what we're going to do is we're going to see a situation where the business is going to have to make the decision to shut down operations. All right, so here's another example. We've got our situation where the business had to make two decisions. First, they had to make the decision about the profit maximizing quantity. They had to make the decision about the price. But now we're in a situation where it's not really the profit maximizing quantity because they are experiencing a loss. So what we would actually call that is the, the loss minimizing quantity. And um, this is, so what I'm saying is, is at this quantity and at this price, this is the best they can do. This is their best situation. In, in all of their trying, in the, in the situation that they're facing, for the price that they can charge, for the demand that they're facing, for their marginal revenue, for their marginal cost, and the cost structure of the business, the best that they can do is lose a whole bunch of money. I think, what are they losing? Something like 27000 or something like that. They're losing a bunch of money. So now they have to make a decision. Are they going to operate at a loss or are they going to shut down the business? And do you recall what we said is they will shut down if the price is smaller than the average variable cost. And if we come over here, you can see very clearly average variable cost is 40 and the price is 35. So now here's the situation this company is facing. Their average total cost is obviously larger than their average variable cost and their average variable cost is larger than their price. And so this company is going to shut down. And I want to show you why they're going to shut down instead of operating at a loss. Because you might be thinking, well, in the last example, you said that they should just keep doing business because they're recovering some of their fixed costs. Okay, let's do the same thing we did last time. We're going to compare the situation where they don't do business with the situation where they do business, where they continue business. Okay, If they produce the profit maximizing quantity of 1800 at a price of $35, the loss that they will experience will be the difference between average total cost and price, which is $15, times 1800 And so that is $27,000. So they are losing $27,000 if they continue operating. If they shut down, if they send all the employees home, turn off the electricity, probably even maybe shut off the plumbing if they can, turn off all the lights, shut the doors, put a big padlock and a chain on the door and say, we are closed, we are not doing business right now. Right now. If they shut down the business, all they have to pay are their fixed costs. That's all they have to cover because there won't be any variable costs. They're not producing anything. And so their fixed costs would be the average fixed cost times the, the profit maximizing quantity, right? So it would be $10 times 1,800, and that's going to be $18,000. So they would be losing $18,000 in their fixed costs if they decide to shut down. So if they all get in their big room, all the people that are deciding, hey, we got a big decision to make. We can either lose $27,000 or we can lose $18,000. Rational person, rational decision maker is going to say, well, I would rather lose $18,000 than lose $27,000. 
and they would be correct. And the 18, 000, losing $18,000, that's the situation where you produce a quantity of zero. Losing 20, 27,000, that's where you produce a quantity of 1,800. And so now, if the choice is produce zero units and lose $18,000 or produce 1,800 units and lose $27,000, the rational decision maker in a business is going to say, let's produce nothing. Send everybody home, lock the door, shut off the electricity. If things get better, let's say we'll, we'll check back again in a month or two or maybe a few months and we'll see if things improve. And if demand improves or if the cost structure changes in some way or another, then maybe they can open the doors back up and continue doing business. Okay. All right. Let's just uh, look at one more example of these. All right, here's our final example. I'm giving you a clean graph again, and I want to see if you can figure out whether this business is going to profit, if they're going to operate at a loss, or if they are going to shut down. And I want you to justify with the little mathematical thing. Okay? All right, go ahead and try it. Okay, so first thing we need to know is what's the, the first decision any business makes is how much should they produce. So we're going to go to where the marginal revenue is equal to marginal cost. And we are going to identify 60 is the profit maximizing PM, profit maximizing quantity. Now we need to know the price. So we're going to go all the way up here to the demand curve and over, and we see that the price is going to be $10. Price. Okay. Then we need to identify the average variable cost. So we go up, up this curve here, we find the average variable cost. The average variable cost is going to be $5. Right? And then we go find the average total cost. We'll go up this line to right here. Sorry, I went over just a tad bit. We'll come over here and we'll see that the average total cost is going to be $7. And now we can see very clearly that price is larger than average total cost, which is obviously larger than average variable cost. And because price is larger than average total cost, we know that this company should operate, continue operating, and they are operating at a profit. And we can actually see the profit rectangle right here. That is the profit rectangle, um, just like we looked at previously. Okay? All right. This is an important skill, being able to understand these market graphs for microeconomics. If you can understand this stuff, you are ready to move on to the next lesson where we're going to take this graph and we're going to start mangling it and changing it and doing all kinds of interesting stuff with it. Okay? Make sure you do the practice. Make sure you keep up with this stuff so you can do your calculations and be ready for the next lesson.